As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. These are the words of Jesus to each and every one of us today. Abide, remain, live in, obey, and dwell in that love we receive. And here we will find the expectation that we will share with each other the love that God shares with us. As we are all in this life together, equal participants in God's loved creation. Living in Chicago during the seminary, I had a friend who was a die-hard fan of the Washington Nationals baseball team. And so, every time they came through Chicago, specifically every time they came through Wrigley Field to play the Cubs, a group of us would make the journey up from the south side to watch the game. The first time I was invited to such an expedition, my friend Shurston said to me, Oh, and if you have any Nationals gear, you should wear that. I'm not sure why she thought I, the native North Carolinian who had moved to Chicago from Ohio, would have Nationals clothing or hats, but I figured I would handle that later. There are some times that the us and them dynamic is a positively powerful thing when it develops and gives a sense of belonging, whether you root, root, root for the home team or are merely exchanging high fives with other strangers also wearing Nationals hats at the end of a 1-2 game. There are, however, other times that this us and them dynamic can lead to bad places or corrosive realities. A few years ago, I was here in town to run the Capital City 5K. There were about 3,000 of us running that event, and I was dressed as I typically dress for a chilly run, with a bright green hoodie on and my purple Louisiana State University hat that was a gift from a mission trip chaperone some years ago. As the runners were moving up to the starting line, the crowd clapped, cheered, and celebrated on that cold Ohio morning. Family members were waving to their loved ones, offering them thumbs-ups and other signs of support as the runners prepared to take off. As I approached the starting line, amidst the crowd noises, I heard one loud voice above the rest. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Hey, you! Now, at that point, it had been 12 years since I had lived here in Columbus, and I knew for a fact that my best friend was still at his house with his kids. But regardless... Knowing it wasn't about me, I looked for the person yelling to see what the commotion was about, and when I made contact, I realized that he was actually calling for me. He pointed at my LSU hat, pulled open his coat to reveal an Alabama sweatshirt, and then offered me a hand gesture that was neither a thumbs up nor any other sign of support. In some ways, I'm almost impressed by his dedication to this rivalry. That he singled out the largest person in a crowd of 3,000 people. Though mostly, I just felt sad that this man's way of interacting with a complete stranger was to be nasty, aggressive, and underline these assumed differences in the middle of a joyful celebration of community. Telling me loud and clear that from his perspective, you are one of them. Sadly, religious history, for all of the good that it entails, is not free from these same kinds of taunts and divisions. Whether it's two churches that share a tradition in the same town, the growing ecumenical and interfaith conversations around the world, or even simply asking the question, who belongs, 
when identifying our own community. And this is nothing new. Let's take a moment to look at the reading from Acts on this sixth Sunday of the Easter season, year B. St. Luke is writing and describing the events that he sees as a member of the crowd. He describes that Peter is speaking to a crowd. He is at the home of Cornelius, a Roman soldier, and that is, in and of itself, an unusual situation. A Christian at a Roman soldier's house. As the Romans were Gentiles, and generally not warm to the movement. It's here, in Cornelius' home, that the Holy Spirit falls upon all who heard the word. Now, the most important word in this passage, I think, is in verse 44. And the word is all. Everyone who heard Peter speak, both Christians and Gentiles, had the Holy Spirit descend upon them. This is a remarkable occurrence. We can tell because of Luke's remarks as the author. Luke writes, The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. The people of faith were astounded that the Holy Spirit had even been poured out on the Gentiles, on them, the people on the other side, the enemies, if you will, the outsiders, the visiting team. I mean, if our group is us, and they are them, and suddenly we become we, what does that do to the us and them dynamic? We could fight for it, and people do. Fight for the divisions, our way and their way, yours and mine, A and B. We can purposely seek out that division, this mentality of this team and that team. But we don't have to. There is another way. On my way to that first Nationals-Cubs game, I said to my friend Sherston that once at Wrigley I was going to buy a Nationals t-shirt to rile up the locals. My group of friends got quiet and all of them began to look at me as my buddy Kevin asked, hey, do you think you can buy Nationals merchandise at the Cubs ballpark? Why wouldn't I? I responded. Because they're the away team, man. I had no idea. Because, see, when you go to a WWE pro wrestling event, they sell their shirts of every wrestler, good, bad, or otherwise. And in the huddled masses of t-shirt wearing pro wrestling fans is the reality that though we cheer and boo different people, it's not about your person or my person. It's about the experience that we are sharing. Agree as we will and disagreeing when we will, we are all in this together. Since the time of Peter, the Holy Spirit has been active and moving, descending upon all who hear and constantly widening the scope of us until us and them disappears into we. The Holy Spirit blows where it will, and we in the church must account for that movement following where the Spirit leads. How did the church of the first century arrive at the point where insiders like Peter were willing to include outsiders like Cornelius? How? by the power of the Holy Spirit. How have we remained astounded by the constant inclusion of others throughout time? How? By the work of the Holy Spirit poured out upon all people. 
Faith is not a competition. It is not a device or a mechanism for excluding or drawing lines. Faith is our breathless attempt to keep up with the inclusive and redemptive activity of God for all people. Inviting all into the love of Christ where we are to abide. Jesus calls us to abide in his love. Abide, remain, obey, observe, follow, dwell, sojourn, live in a love for all of creation. Beyond the hats and shirts, beyond the home team and the away team, beyond the us and them. And inside this creation, realize that we are all in this together. This, this reality of God's love, and this reality that God so loves. Amen.